Hey guys. Anyway, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever the fluff you are. And welcome to what is probably just going to be another one of those little random rambles that I seem to have. This one just came up because there's been quite a lot of talk and speculation and stuff that um, Super League could possibly either drop to 10, keep the 12, or move to 14 or whatever, and go down some other like pseudo franchise route again with everything, keeping some of the teams in that we've already got, and then bringing in some of the other teams. Now, my whole thing would be, for me personally, I would probably have like a 14 team, maybe even a 15 or 16 team minimum. Because at the moment, with Super League being just 12, kind of makes it a little bit diff difficult. But then again, there is the side of it with the TV money, which obviously Super League is going to get more TV money, but technically they don't. The TV money doesn't really seem to make much of an effect on it. Plus, it's the whole thing with the salary cap as well with the marquee players being able to get like that percentage over and everything else it's like the salary cap you can see that with the nrl it's us to the nrl we the nrl are looking miles ahead of us with uh, how much they can pay she is but some of the australians come down here to do their extreme weather or crap weather or shite weather training but some of them come over here really and make the name of like you, you know your Wigan, your St Helens, Leeds, you name it. Just those ones off the top of my head. Then you've got like even in the Championship, you've got Fev. Come on. <laughs> you know you got Widnes, Newcastle, Whitehaven, Dewsbury, Broncos in London, Bradford Bulls, York, Lee, Halifax, Batley, Barra. Whitehaven, Workington. You know, you got. I'm just going to keep using the quotes here, but you've got smaller teams, aka the non household names. I don't really like using the small teams bracket, but it's the non household names. Because obviously, every bugger out there is going to know about Wigan, St. Helens, and Leeds, and Warrington. You, they're all going to know about a lot of the bigger Super League, well, the bigger clubs. Because the fame, the championships, the trophies, it just goes hand in hand with it. But for your teams like your Barras, your Sheffields, your Widness, you know, your London Broncos, your Workingtons, your Featherston Rovers, even Halifax, they're all in there with the shout of being able to get up. Now, for me personally, I would have like, a, let's say, a minimum of 14 teams. Then I would have the Two up, two down for your pro rel. Thus meaning more rollover, more rollover, more turnover, more turnover, more ability, more spaces, more teams. It's the same thing with the F1 argument of whether the 20 with the 10 French works or you just stick it to the max. If this was to talk about F1, I would be saying just stick it to the max, stick it to the 26 teams so you've got 13 franchises. Just means everything has everything. So if we could do that with this and at least have a minimum of 14 teams, maybe push to 6. 16 teams might be a bit of a push. 14 teams probably be about perfect because then you then don't have to have all of the extra like rollover ones and with ones where you play like a, a team for the third time in the league, even though really you're only supposed to be playing them twice. That might make it more entertaining. Plus it would be a lot better because it might expand it. Plus now with Channel 4 having a lot of the coverage, they've stuck their neck out and they are doing absolutely blindingly on that. You know, their coverage is pretty is pretty much spot on. We've got Adam Hills who plays disability rugby. Admittedly, yes, Warrington fan there, but he plays it, he knows his shit. And then you've got Helen Skelton who's learning the ropes. She's absolutely fizzing at it. She's awesome. You know, they are going absolutely balls out to get it going. Then you've got Sky. All right, yeah, I've had my winches about Sky. Sky, bless them, they're trying. Whether they're trying to 
fob it off. I don't know. I'm not going to really talk into their stuff because I don't like the like Fox Media Empire. And someone out there is going to tell me it's not Fox Media, but it technically is because it was created by Murdoch in that thing, and Murdoch still has the Murdoch Empire still has um, fingers in that pie. So um, <laughs> to you on that, but you know, I just can't stand Sly. I don't. I cannot stand like the fucking Sly Network, Sly Sports, whatever, overcharging for absolute bullshit. But hey, but at least they're, they're trying. And then you got the BBC coverage, which <laughs> they're doing. This, they are trying to get better, but sometimes they just roll out the same crusty old peeps again. You know, they they, they keep getting the same people to cover rugby union and rugby league, which. When you hear the same voices, sometimes it does get a little bit jarring, especially when one of them cocks up or there is a little bit of dead air. Let's have a moment, so, you know. But, um, yeah, they are trying with that. And obviously, yes, we're going to in the Challenge Cup final on the 28th, which, yeah. But we kind of got a hiding from our opponent. Huddersfield at that time, so yeah, we're gonna need to be a bit better on that one. But yeah, back to the point. Bring it back up the scale a bit. Try and push it up, not down. Don't try to sequester and protect the you know, the heritage names because you're cutting off some other heritage names and some other places that would do really well. Especially, all right, yeah, some of them might not exactly have the world's greatest stadiums. And, you know, they're not going to be a 23rd stadium. It's not going to be all cushy and comfy. Good. Sometimes you need to get out of your shell a little bit and get out of your comfort zone. Come on. Get out there in wet. Get out there in cold. Get snowed on. Get peed on. Get shat on by seagulls. It don't bloody matter, does it? It's supposed to be it's supposed to be a mud blood thunder game. That's what it was supposed to be, or at least that's what I remember from my granddad, from what he always used to keep saying. Every now and then you might get one where it's a little bit messy out there, and it's a mud blood thunder. So yeah, I know there's probably going to be some Harry Potter fans out there with mud blood, bloody hell. It's like yeah, 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 mud blood and thunder. Speaking of thunder, Newcastle thunder. Hey, roll that one in. I know it's a bit cheesy, but I don't care. But hey, especially if it was, I don't really know who I would bring up. Yeah, all right. I'm, <laughs> you know, you, you've got a bit of a shout for kind of like having Fev, Lee, York, Halifax, Batley, Sheffield, Bradford, Newcastle. Working to London, whatever. There's a lot of shouts to get some of them. I don't really know who to get up. For me personally, I would probably say throw it out there and kind of, you know, for the first two seasons, give one or two teams, give it a test, see how it goes. Especially with some teams. I don't. If I turn around and said, oh, well, I want Broncos up, and then you look at where they are at the moment in the championship table. They've got three points. The 13th. So someone out there would probably say, yeah, but that's shit because they're just going to get hammered. Good to lose. To lose, yeah, the second French team. They're in the league. They, they are in the league and they are trying their damnedest to actually do it. They've put on some good points. They've... <laughs> Beats the talents. They give a wicked, a fucking good run for it. They almost took Leeds. Leeds in the position they're in at the moment. The bottom of the table for Super League is looking a little bit messy, but for some fans that is actually quite they're, they're quite happy because you got Wakey, you got your Leeds, Salford down there, and then you've got Wire. For those out there who are just watching my videos that don't know what, what who Wire is, that is Warrington Wolves. You know, and then you've got Hulk, Hulk KR, Hulk Kingston Rovers. They are just on seventh. So that's the bottom half. But this is the difference. 
Rovers are on 12 points. Then you've got Wolves on 10. Then it drops. 8 for Salford. 7 for Leeds. 6 for Wakey. And 4 for Toulouse. Now Toulouse look like, a, look like a handy team when they're on form, but they've just got to put it together. All right, yeah, I know they might not exactly have some of the world's greatest players and they might not have all of that experience, but they've put some teams under the pump. They've really pushed it and they've put the pressure up, which is what you really want out of a team in the lower edges of this table. You want them to put the pressure on. You want them to get, you know, a nice little line break. You want them to feed off of it. All right, yeah, they might, they might be kind of like the, the massive underdogs and everyone's favourites to go down, but come on. You can't exactly say that they're not doing They're not giving it a go. Don't know what's going on at Leeds, and I don't really want to go into that. Yeah, they've got one of our, our players, you know, Zach Ardeka. He wanted to go back to Yorkshire. All being well for him. I have no qualms with that. Personally, I would rather have seen him stay for one last season, or if he couldn't have stayed, at least have gone before the start of the season. But then again, who knows how that would have worked out, whether it was would have done. And then with the collapse and seizure that he had, whether that was a, a, an unknown medical thing or not, again, I'm not going to go into that one because I'm not speculating on anything to do with that. But fair play to him. He's gone, he's gone to another team. He's gone back to Yorkshire. He's back in Leeds. He's played for Leeds before. So he's back with them. He's doing fine health-wise. I, I didn't see if he put any points up on the board when I looked at the scores because I wasn't exactly that interested in that one at that time because I had other things going on in reality. I, I do have to stay away from the sport at times. But yeah... Saints are always going to be up the Catalan Dragons. Now that is a bit of a you know, surprise for some people, but not a surprise for some of us who have actually seen them give, handing out pastings once in a while. You know, they're doing well. And then Wigan are the Huddersfield Giants. Now, yeah. Wigan and Huddersfield separated on the board by three points. That would have been five points if Wigan would have beaten Huddersfield, but we didn't. But... Hey, that's by the by. It doesn't really matter because he's still in the mids. He's still in the mix. You go Hull FC and Cat. Little, little Castlefield Tigers. Taking up the top six. So if he was to I don't I don't really want to say throw you know, throw Lee in there. I know because the jump from championship to Super League is a bit different. But maybe adding that extra two, three or four spaces into the table. That might make it a bit more mixed at the bottom. It might mean then that the lower to the mid is a bit different. So that you've not got your usual... You may still get your usual top three, top four, top five. But then your mid might still... You might still get... You know, you might still get a Lee and a Fev popping up. You might still get the ability for to, to lose to jump from bottom of the table to up here. There's going to be more mix. And also giving more TV ability and more money in to those other teams. The trickle-down effect should then work better. I know some people are going to say, oh, well, that's not how economics works with that. Yeah, but if you've then got youth players who then play for the teams who are then top edge of that in the championship, who can then work it out, but those youth players are for a mid-table team, and they help that on, Maybe if that youth player decides at the end of their possible contract or their trial period with that other team, not their parent team, maybe if they go, yeah, but boss, what if I actually turn, take the contract over there? What if we do a deal where I could go over there instead of staying here? Because I like it there. Because I'm actually part of their system. And it feels better for me rather than staying here. Could get more players moving across. Especially with a lot of the other stuff. You never know how it works until you try it. There's been a lot of failed examples going on within the British Rugby League system. Especially, I know it was affected by COVID, but Toronto Wolfpack, it was an experiment. It was just a giant money ball, really, and a giant money pit. 
they went down and it was inevitable eventually that it was going to burst I was always singing the praises of it but I never really looked deep into it with it just being personally financed by the owner who also owned the you know the airline that was their major sponsor so obviously that he was then forking out all the money he was then paying everything up he was paying for the travel for this and that and all of the other stuff but it was that was one giant loss making machine that experiment didn't quite work so that's why everything is up in the now or North American Rugby League NARL so yeah I also say as well I did do a little video a while back on the NARL so if you want to look for that I'll try and see if I can remember and stick that in there but if you can just do us a favour it is in the uh, boxes somewhere somewhere along one of these let's talks it is in there so um, hit it up and give that a watch that's probably just another, another me just rambling on about shiz as always I can't even remember but yeah if you was to do that yeah personally yeah, I would say a 14 team make it 14 14 so you got 14 teams in Super League 14 teams in the championship and I think it's 14 teams is it legal? No, it's 11 teams in League One. It's looking at, I'm just going to have a quick look at this as well, since I'm already here. Yeah. So it's been nice seeing a little bit of difference with, as far as I can tell, anyway, two London teams. One in the championship and one down here, the London Scholars, and you got Cornwall. Now, I know again, some people are probably going to say, Yeah, but it's Cornwall, it's not exactly going to be the world's greatest. Well, it doesn't matter. They're trying to expand it, they're giving it a go, they're trying something to expand it. All right, yes, I know they might need a, a better a better stadium and a better set, setup, like all of the stuff that's going on in other places, but. They're giving it a go. They've tried to expand it. And Cornwall has had a history of rugby over the years. Same in Wales. Obviously everyone knows Wales is going to be better for the for, for Union. But a lot of the times teams will feed off each other. The Union will feed off of the league. The league, league will feed off of the Union. There's always going to be that little bit of crossover. There's always been that crossover through the history. It's the same with everything. There's always going to be crossovers, especially when you've got sports which are so closely aligned to each other like that. League came from Union, so obviously there was that. League was always going to be the better one. League was professional for so long. Union's now taken over in that respect for the money, basically what the TV rights and everything like that, just because that's how it's always been. Shouldn't be. They should be on equal footing. But personally... Having the two codes, they should really be on equal equal footing. But I ain't getting into that. Anyway, what is your ideas? What is your views on it? Where do you think it is? Yeah, I hate the 10-10 idea. Because that just kills it. It just turns it into a flat franchise with nothing. Super League 1, Super League 2. I don't like that idea at all because it doesn't help anything. There's no cross pollination in that respect there's no pro rel realms it's just protecting it's literally just big boys club that's all it is it's just protecting itself so maybe if you widen it out and you turn around to the tv companies and you just go hey lads dig into your pocket a bit more and then you can keep us if you turn around to them a bit more and just go look can you actually get coverage which actually works and can you not keep putting certain teams on at certain times could you actually spread it out could you make it nicer so that we don't have an 8 o'clock kickoff? Maybe we have a 7 o'clock kickoff or a half 7 kickoff. Maybe if we had more games spread over a weekend. You know. Just because sometimes getting to a game, let's just say this. I'm just going to leave this as my ending thing. The way it is at the moment with the time slots. So you come home from work. And then you've got to go to a game at 8 o'clock. So you've got to get across town. So because, like, just for instance, 
you're not you, you know you're not driving because let's say just you don't drive or your cars like you know bust or whatever or you know it's going to be absolute mayhem so you're not driving so you live over the other side of town so you've got to get the bus so you've got to get a, a bus it in and bus it out and then get back by the time you've got there and then got back it's then so late that you're getting straight back into bed and you're knackered again so maybe we bring these times down a little bit and make the time crunch a little bit more polite and helpful for the actual viewing public who are going watching it in the stadium that would be one thing and another one as well when you've got the ability to have your multi-channel era could you please spread it a bit more so let's say when there is no football on because there's like internationals going on or it's the end of the football season and it is summer rugby and there isn't that many other sports going along you can have this on this this on this and this on this you can have multiple games back to back or side by side with each other because not everyone wants to watch the same two or three teams every flipping week not everyone can afford to get up and go to these places at eight at night not everyone can travel halfway across the width of the country to be able to go watch a team so maybe the tv companies think a little bit more and the rfl actually have a quick word with them and say look can you make it so that it doesn't screw the fans over because from my point of view when i've been looking on tv and this is more of the sky stuff when i've been doing the sky stuff when i had an when i had the sky packages it was the same two or three teams so you could see where their allegiances were and you could see where their little grub was coming all right yeah i know you're probably going to watch want to want to watch some superstars but when you've got a team which is at the top of the league and a team at the bottom of the league and the team at the top of the league is just handing out a pasting. That is not a good watch. And that's come from a neutral idea. So you're watching a team blow another team away. That is not a good watch. You want to concentrate more on the other game, which was a close one. A game which was settled by a drop goal. A game which was settled by one last minute tear away from end zone to end zone. You don't want to concentrate on where the big money goes. Because sometimes the big money doesn't always give you the best viewing. Anyway, before my throat decides to rattle me again, peace out.